Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain News update. And the government today will approve a series of measures that it hopes will save energy. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel through a donation or by buying me a beer or a coffee or by using the new super thanks option. Many thanks for that. Thanks to people that bought merchandise and a big thanks thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your ongoing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, the government today will approve a series of measures that were announced last Friday by Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez with the main objective of saving energy. As we can read here, the government will approve a package of energy efficiency and energy saving measures today, Monday. The government will approve this Monday a package of urgent measures for energy efficiency and savings as announced at a press conference last Friday by Pedro Sanchez. The Prime Minister did not specify the measures, although he did guarantee that they will not entail cuts in the supply for families and industry, assuring that they will be beneficial as they will translate into savings in the electricity bill and in the competitiveness of industry. Specifically, the decree that the government plans to approve extends the temperature standards that already apply in the government bodies to public transport, workplaces and shops and businesses. This regulation establishes that the temperature of air conditioning conditioning in summer may not be lower than 27 degrees Celsius, while heating may not exceed 19 degrees Celsius. So there we go, air conditioning in summer months in Spain to be set at 27 degrees Celsius minimum in shopping centres, shops, businesses, public transport and in government buildings. And in the winter months, heating to be set at 19 degrees Celsius maximum. And this, the government thinks, as we saw in the article, is to make businesses more competitive. So again, we'll see if indeed this is the case. Now, another thing that the Prime Minister suggested the other day for people working in offices wearing a suit is that they should ditch the necktie. As we can see here, Spain heatwave, Prime Minister tells workers to stop wearing ties to save energy. Spanish Prime Minister Pedro Sánchez has called on workers in the public and private sector to stop wearing ties as an energy saving measure in the heat. Mr. Sanchez said his government will adopt urgent energy saving measures on Monday as European countries strive to become less dependent on Russian gas in the wake of the war in Ukraine. On Friday, temperatures reached 36 degrees Celsius in Madrid and 39 degrees Celsius in Seville. Over the past few weeks, Europe has experienced record high temperatures. At a news conference in Madrid, Mr. Sanchez pointed out that he wasn't wearing a tie and said he wanted his ministers, public officials and workers in the private sector to do the same. This means that we can all save energy, he added. So there we go, the latest brainwave from Prime Minister Sanchez, stop wearing neckties. And if you do decide to ditch the necktie in a city like Madrid or Seville where it can be extremely hot, how much energy are you going to save? How much more comfortable will you be? That's the question. And the funny thing about Mr. Sanchez's press conference on Friday, where he recommended people stop wearing neckties was that straight after the press conference, he hopped into a helicopter, went to an airport and caught a plane to another destination. So perhaps Mr. Sanchez should cut back on those helicopter trips if he really wants to save energy. Just a suggestion. Now, if you are a woman in Spain and you plan on visiting a nightclub, be careful, because as we can see here, complaints from women being jabbed by needles in nightclubs have multiplied in recent days. The first cases of needle jab injuries in Spain occurred during the running of the Bulls Festival in Pamplona. Four women went to the emergency services, indicating that they had been jabbed by strangers, felt dizzy, and had a feeling of loss of consciousness. The chemical submission protocol was immediately activated. Throughout the month of July, the jabs have been repeated in different parts of Spain. The Authorities have already confirmed numerous cases in Catalonia, Navarra, Madrid, the Canary Islands, the Balearic Islands, Andalusia, and the Basque Country. So as I said before, if you're a woman in Spain and planning on going to a nightclub, be careful because some clowns are going around sticking needles into women with a toxic substance. And this, as we saw in the article, is apparently happening in various 
autonomous communities. So watch out. Now, the main opposition leader in Spain, Alberto Núñez Feijó, gave his first major interview yesterday with newspaper El Mundo, and he was extremely critical of the government's way of handling the crisis. As we can see here, according to Mr. Feijó, Prime Minister Sánchez has put every Spaniard 6,000 euros in debt. This is what he said this Sunday in an interview he gave to El Mundo, in which he assured that the first thing he would do if he were to govern would be to express the state of Spain's accounts and reduce the number of ministers. What we will do will be an audit of the economic, fiscal, debt and deficit situation and on the basis of this we will make proposals. What I can assure you is that with 30% fewer ministers the government will be more efficient and when people see that a helicopter, a Falcon plane and an Audi are not used to travel 300 kilometres, that no minister has a gold Falcon card, that the government reduces its structure by at least 30%, we will begin to send an example to the people, he said. So, according to the opposition leader, Mr. Feijó, the first thing that he's going to do if he gets into government is to reduce the amount of ministries and government spending. Probably a good idea, in my opinion. Now, we all know that Spain has experienced a bit of a housing boom recently, and a lot of people are asking the question, where is housing on the coast in Spain rising the most? The coastal housing market has consolidated its strength after the half-hearted recovery of 2021, when many restrictions were still in place to contain the coronavirus. The start of this year shows that the levels of 2019 have already been surpassed in both sales and prices. The main protagonist is the national buyer, although the international buyer has also experienced the strong increase, who sees in this type of asset a good investment with seasonal rentals, although many operations are also led by families in search of a second home by the sea. And if we have a look at some of these coastal cities and the changes in prices compared with last year, we can see that the Galician city of Pontevedra is out in front with an interannual change of 11.6%, followed by the Balearic Islands, 8.6% change. Lugo, also in Galicia, 6.4%. Malaga is also high at 5.2%, but Alicante hasn't seen much of a change at 1.6%. If you're looking to buy coastal property here in Spain, I hope that map helps. And keeping on the subject of real estate, the most expensive flat in Benidorm's history has recently been sold. As we can see here, the most expensive flat in the history of Benidorm sold in the Delphin Tower. Delphin Tower has already become an architectural landmark for the Benidorm skyline and gives a boost to the positioning of the coastal town as a luxury residential destination. And it has earned it with the price of the most expensive flat in the building, 2.8 million euros, occupying the 15th floor of 380 square meters with four bedrooms and four bathrooms. The cheapest is 955,000 euros, and according to reputable sources, 33 of the 39 flats have already already been sold. And if you're curious to see what the Delphin Tower looks like, here you go. Another beachfront monstrosity down there in Benidorm. But hey, people are willing to pay premium prices to live there. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from Peter. I'm on holiday from the UK staying in Playa Flamenca near Thenia Boulevard, which is a really large shopping complex. Most of the shops here have aircon on, but they also have their doors open. I believe in France this has been banned. It's about time it was in Spain. Spain. Yeah, Peter, thanks for the comment and obviously referring to the fact that businesses and shops here in Spain as of today, for example, in the place that you mentioned there, Thenia Boulevard, will now have to have their air conditioning set at 27 degrees Celsius. But the point you're making is what good is this going to do if the doors are constantly open? They would also need to regulate that as well. And you're right, what's the point of having the air conditioning constantly on if the doors are continuously open? So probably a good idea for the government to ban this as well if they want to get serious about saving energy. One here from Simon, beer cost. In Albox, Almeria, a tubo of Amstel is one euro fifty, as is a 330ml bottle of Estrella, the green one. White wine is the same price, anything from a 175 to 250 mil measure, depending on the bar staff. Yes, yeah, Simon, thanks for the comment and thanks for adding to the conversation that we have been having in recent times about how much you pay for a beer and other beverages when you're sitting outside at a bar or a restaurant on one of the terrazas. We saw how prices can vary, especially in Andalusia, with people paying around 250 in places like Seville or Cardiff and up to 5 euros in places like 
like Almeria. I thought that price was a bit expensive for a city like Almeria, but then I realized that they probably give you a few plates of tapas to go with your beer, hence the price. And there you are saying that in Albox in Almeria, you pay around one euro fifty for a tubo. And if anybody's not familiar with a tubo de cerveza, it's one of these tall, thin glasses that in some parts of Spain, they serve beer in. And when it comes to wine and the amount of wine that you get in your glass, you're right, it depends on the wait staff. Sometimes they give you a good sized drink and sometimes they can be a bit stingy. But remember, you can always ask for a little bit more if you're not happy with the size of your drink. One here from Ellen, I sometimes miss the live streams and watch them the next day. I understand that listening to you saying hello to everyone is a little bit annoying the next day, but a live stream is what it is and the interaction is important. The ones that are bored can watch the shorter ones. I like the mix of videos you give us. Greetings from a nice and shady Fuerteventura. Yellen, thanks for the comment, and you're right, there have been a few complaints in recent times from people that are not happy that I say hello to everyone during the live streams. But again, as you said in your comment, it is fundamental the interaction on live streams, in my opinion. So, what I have decided to do is take the live stream, put it into my editing software, take out all of those hellos that I say to people during the live stream, and give people an abridged version or a shorter version of the live stream that only contains the news and my reply to some comments. And hopefully, this will keep some people content. And the first example of the new shorter version of the live stream was posted today, so check it out. One here from Miguel, great channel, thank you. Looking to buy a vacation home in the Asturias region. Do you recommend waiting the housing market out a bit or is now a good time? Miguel from San Jose, California. Yeah, Miguel, thanks for the comment, but to be brutally honest, I have no idea whether it is a good time or not to buy property in a place like Asturias. We saw on the map before that there has been a change on prices from last year in Asturias, especially in the coastal areas there, for example, Gijón, of around 4.8%. But again, and as I just said, I'm no real estate expert, especially when it comes to property in Asturias. But fortunately, we have a fantastic community here, and I'm sure there are experts out there that know the property market better than I do. So please help Miguel out and let him know whether it is a good time to buy or not in Spain in the comment section below. One here from Steve. Hello, Stuart. Hope you have a great holiday. We're going to Mojaca at the end of August and understand that there are several criteria that we have to meet at the border. Don't the Spanish authorities want British tourists? Also, the main criteria they seem to have forgotten is insurance for holiday travel. Have a great holiday and keep safe. Yes, yeah, Steve, thanks for the comment, and I also hope that you guys have a fantastic holiday down there in Mojaca, Almeria, a fantastic part of Spain. And when it comes to all of these new rules and regulations that are now in place for British tourists coming to Spain, of course, ever since Brexit, the rules and regulations have changed. And as we know, the British press is sure talking a lot about this. But as we have seen in recent times on this channel from viewers' comments, a lot of these rules and regulations, especially the £85 per day rule, is not really being enforced at Spanish airports, or it seems to be more of a random type of check. And as we have also seen, this type of rule is in place in other countries in the European Union, and Spain at £85 per day is cheaper than France, which is apparently over the 100 mark. So I wouldn't let these changes bother you. Enjoy your holiday in Mahaka, and yes, Spain wants people from the UK to visit. Spain, as we know, is a tourist country, and the motto in Spain is, the more the merrier. And you only have to look at some of the images from beaches on the Mediterranean to realize that this is the case absolutely packed. And finally, one here from Ellis, the world's a big place, start traveling outside the EU, who are deliberately trying hard to make life difficult for UK travelers because of Brexit. Sad little vindictive people. Yellis, thanks for the comment. And the only thing I'm gonna say is that the European Union is not trying to make it hard for UK travelers. You did that yourself. The UK voted to leave the EU, knowing that it would then become a third country as far as the European Union is concerned. And of course, there are rules and regulations that apply to third countries. I come from a third country, people from Canada come from a third country, people from the States 
come from a third country. In fact, every country outside the European Union is a third country, and now the UK is one of those. On that note, I'll wrap the video up from the sad, vindictive European Union. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego. Adelog.